the Joe Rogan experience. This Google engineer that has come out and said that he believes that the Google AI is sentient because it says that it is sad, it says it's lonely, it starts communicating, and, you know, Google is, it seems like they're in a dilemma in that situation. First of all, if it is sentient, does it get rights? Right. Like, does it get days off? Yep. It, 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 I had this conversation with my friend Duncan Trussell last night, and he was saying, imagine if you, you know, if you have to give it rights. Mm -hmm. Like, is it, does it get treated like a human being? Like, what is it? Mm -hmm. Well, I'll give you, I'll make it even a step harder. What if you copy it? Right. Now you've got two of them. <laughs> well, that was what I said to Ray Kurzweil. Ray Kurzweil was talking at one point in time about downloading consciousness right. into computers and that he believes that inevitably will happen. Right. And my thought was like, well, what's going to stop someone from downloading themselves a thousand times? Yeah, of course. Right. With some Donald Trump type character just wants a million Trumps out there, just yeah. out there doing speeches. Yeah. Like, what what would stop that? Yeah, exactly. So so let's let's start with what this actually is today, which is I, I think you know, which is very interesting, not well understood, but very interesting. So what what Google and this, this other company, OpenAI, that are are doing these kind of text the text bots that have the you know the the, the been, been in the news. What they do, it's a, it's a, it's a program. It's an it's an AI program. It, it's it's basically it uses a form of math called linear algebra. It's a very well known form of math, but it uses a very complex version of it. And then basically, what they do is they've got complex math running on big computers, and then what they do is they have what they call training data. And so what they do is they basically slurp in a huge data set from somewhere in the world, and then they basically train the math against against the data to try to kind of get it up to speed on how to interact and, and do things. The training data that they're using for these systems is all text on the internet, right? So, and, and all text on the internet increasingly is a record of all human communication, right? That's all the text on the internet. All the text on the internet. So, how does it capture all this stuff? Well, that, so Google Google's core business is to be the is to do that is to be the crawler. You know, famously their mission: organize world's information. They they actually pull in all the text on the internet already to make their search engine work, and then that's that's. And, and then, then you, the AI just scans that. And the AI basically uses that as a training set, right? Um, and so, and, and, and basically. Just just basically choose through and processes it. It's a very complex process, but like choose through and processes it, and then the AI kind of gets a converged kind of view of like, okay, this is human language. This is what these people are talking about, you know. And then it has all this statistical, you know, when when a human being says X, somebody else says Y or Z, or this would be a, a good thing to say or bad thing to say. For, for example, you can get emotion. You can you can detect emotional loading from text now. So you can kind of determine with the computer. You can kind of say this text reflects somebody who's happy because they're saying, oh, you know, I'm having a great day. Versus this text is like I'm. Super Super mad, you know. Therefore, it's upset, and so you could have the computer could get trained on. Okay, if I say this thing, it's likely to make humans happy. If I this, say this thing, it's likely to make humans sad. But here's the thing: it, 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 it's all it's all human generated text. It's it's all the conversations that, that that we've all had, and and so basically you load that into the computer, and then the computer is able to kind of simulate right somebody else ha having that conversation. Um, but but what happens is basically the computer is playing back what people say, right? It, it, right. It's not. It's not. Nobody. N no engineer. The, the, guy, the guy who went through this and did the the, the whistleblower thing. He, he even said he didn't look at the code. He's not. He's not in there like working on the code. Everybody who works in the code will tell you it's not alive. It's not conscious. It's not having original ideas. What it's doing is it's playing back to you things that it thinks that you want to hear based on all the things that everybody has already said to each other that, mm. that, that, it, that it can get online. And in fact, there's all these ways you can kind of trick it into basic. Like, for example, you can have it. He has this example where he like has it where basically he said, you know, I want you to prove that you're alive. And then the computer did all this stuff through it's alive. You can do the reverse. You can say, I want you to prove that you're not alive. And the computer will happily prove that it's not alive. Mm. And it'll give you all these arguments as to why it's not actually alive. And of course, it's because... It, the computer has no view on whether it's alive or not. But it seems like in in with with the, this is all very weird. Yes. And for sure, we're in the fog of life. If it's not life, it's in this weird fog of like what makes a person a person. Like what makes an intelligent, thinking human being that knows how to communicate able to respond and answer questions? Well, it does it through cultural context. It does it through understanding language and having been around enough people that have communicated in a certain way that it emulates that. Right. Yeah. So this is the real question. So th this is where I was headed. The, the, the real question is, what does it mean for a person to think? Right. Like, that's the real question. And so and, and so let's talk about there's something called the Turing test, right, which yeah. is a little bit more famous now because the, the movie they Alan made about, Turing. Made about yeah. Alan Turing. 
So the Turing test basically, in its simplified form, the Turing test is basically you're sitting in a computer terminal, you're typing in questions, and then the answers are showing up on the screen. There's a 50% chance you're talking to a person sitting in another room who's typing the responses back. There's a 50% chance you're talking to a machine. You don't know, right? You're, you're the subject. And you can ask the entity on the other end of the connection any number of questions, right? He, will, he or she or it will give you any number of answers. At the end, you have to make the judgment as to whether you're talking to a person or talking to a machine. The, the theory of the Turing test is when a computer can convince a person that it's a person, then it will have achieved artificial intelligence, right? Th then it will be as, as smart as a person. But, but that begs the question of like, okay, like how easy are we to trick? Right. Right. Like, and, and in yeah. fact, and, and, so, and so actually it turns out what's happened, this is actually true. What's happened is actually there have been chat bots that have been fooling people in the Turing test now for several years. Mm. The easiest way to do it is with a sex chat bot. Because <laughs> they're the most gullible when it Specific, comes to sex. Specifically to men. Of course. <laughs> of I course. bet women are like way less gullible. Women probably fall for it a lot less. But men, like you get a man on there with a sex chat bot, like it, yeah. the man will convince himself he's talking to a real woman like pretty easily even when he's not. Right. Um, and so just think of this as a slightly more, you know, you could think about this as a somewhat more advanced version of that, which is, look, if, if this thing, if it's an algorithm that's been optimized to trick people, basically, to convince people that it's real, it's going to, it's going to pass the Turing test, even though it's not actually conscious, it, meaning it has no awareness, it has no desire, it has right. no regret, it has no fear, you know, it has none of the hallmarks that we would associate with being a living being, like much, much less a, a, a conscious being. And so, so this is, this is the twist. And this is where I think this guy at Google got, 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 got kind of strung up a little bit as, or held up, um, is it, it, the, the computers are going to be able to trick people into thinking they're conscious, like way before mm. they actually become conscious. And then there's just the other side of it, which is like we we have no idea. We don't know how human consciousness works. Like we we have no idea how the brain works. We have no idea how to like we have no idea how to do any of this any any of this stuff on people. The the most advanced form of medical science that understands consciousness is actually anesthesiology, because they know how to turn it off, <laughs> right? They know how to they click you know yeah. power off, and then you know how to power back on, which is also very important. But right. like they have no idea what's happening inside the black box, and and we have no idea. No, nobody has any idea. So, so this is a parallel line of technological development that's not actually recreating the human brain. It's doing something different. It's basically training computers on how to understand process and then reflect back the real world. It's very valuable work because it's going to make computers a lot more useful. For example, self-driving cars. This is the same kind of work that makes a self-driving car work. Yeah. Right? So this is, this is very valuable work. It will create these programs that will be able to trick people very effectively. Right. And so so there, for example, here's what I would be worried about, which is basically like what percentage of people that we follow on Twitter are even real people. Right. What yeah, well, Elon is trying to get to the bottom of that right now. He's trying to get to the bottom of that, you know, specifically on, on that on that issue from the business. But just, just also think more generally, which is like, OK, if you have a computer that's really good at writing tweets, if you have a computer that's really good at writing angry political tweets or writing whatever absurdist you know, humor or whatever it is like. And by the way, maybe the computer is going to be better at doing that than a lot of people are. You know, you could you could imagine a future Internet in which most of the interesting content is actually getting created by machines. You know, there's this new system, Dolly, um, you know, that's getting a lot of visibility now, which is this thing where you can type in any phrase and it'll create you computer generated art. Right? Oh, I've seen that. Yeah. 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 Like, they've done some with me. It's really yeah, weird. Yeah. 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 You know, Chase Lepard, he's got a few of them that he put up on his uh, Instagram. Well, how does that work? Yeah, yeah. So it's it's a very similar thing. So basically, what they do, what, what the, the and Google has one of these, and, and and OpenAI has one of these. What they do is they pull in all of the images on the internet, right? So if you if you think okay. about, if you go to Google Images or whatever, just do a search. You know, on any topic, it'll give you thousands of thousands of images of you, whatever. And then basically, they pull in all the images. Um, yeah, that's me. <laughs> exactly. How bizarre. Yeah, so that's so that's so that's AI generated art. So that's AI generated art. That's a different program. That's just basically doing yeah, sort of psychedelic art. The 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 Dolly ones are basically they'll they're sort of composites. Um, where they will give you basically, a, it's almost like an artist that will give you many different drafts. Yeah, that's okay. another one of me. Yeah. So uh, he the first one he go back to that please. Yeah, you just had it up. It's a, what does it say? It said, uh, what is it? Joe Rogan facing the DMT realm, insanely detailed, intricate, hyper, hyper masculinist, mist, dark, elegant, ornate, luxury, elite, horror, creepy, ominous, haunting, moody, dramatic, volumetric light, 8K render, 8K post, hyper details. So they say that, and then they enter all this stuff in, and this is what comes out? And this is what comes out. Now, holy shit. Yes. Okay, so first of all, yes, it's incredible. Like, that's amazing. It's an original work of art that is exactly the spec that- Why'd they make my nose look like that? <laughs> it doesn't really look like that, right? 
<laughs> not not today. It's it's a little off. I'm a, I would say if that was an artist, like I think you got the nose wrong, and you made my job. Well, it's good. referencing these other artists. If you see at the end, it's actually yes. re- it's referencing. So it's, it's probably pulling in portraits right of other people from those artists and it's using it to do a composite thing. Right. But exactly. the fact that it can make yeah. art now. But see what it's doing, right? So it's very impressive. I mean, the output's very impressive, and the fact that it can do that is impressive, but it's being told exactly what to do. Yes. Like, it didn't have the idea that it was going to do that. It was told, it was, it's, it's following instructions. Right. Right. So it's not sitting, it's not sitting there like a real artist dreaming up new artistic concepts. Right. But right? here's the question, because like, yeah. you, you, were, you were saying this before, that it can trick people into thinking it's yeah. real. How do we know what's, what is alive? So like, that, but this yes. is the question. Like, That's if the it question. Can tr- like, what is a human consciousness Correct. interacting with another human consciousness. Yep. I mean, it is data. Yep. It is uh, the understanding of the use of language, inflection, tone, the vernacular that's used in the, whatever region you're communicating with this person in to make it seem as authentic and normal as possible. Right. And you're doing this back and forth like a game of volleyball, mm-hmm. right? Yep. This is what language is and a conversation is. If a computer's doing that, yep. Well, it doesn't have a memory. Well, but it does have memory. Yeah. Well, it doesn't have emotions. Is that what we are? I don't know. Because if that's what we are, then yeah. we're all, that's all we are. Well. Because the only difference is emotion and maybe biological needs, like the need for food, the need for sleep, the need for you know the, for touch and love and all the the weird stuff that makes people people, yeah. the emotional stuff. But if you extract that, right. the the normal interactions that people have on a day to day basis, it's it's pretty similar. Yeah, yeah. Well, so, so here would be the way to think about it. It's like, what's the difference between an animal and a person, right? Like, why do we grant people rights that we don't grant animals rights? And, of, right. course, and of course, that's a hot topic of debate yes. because there are a lot of people who think animals should have more rights. But, but fundamentally, we do, we do have this idea. We have this idea of what makes a human distinct from a horse or a dog, mm-hmm. right, is, is, is self-awareness, right? Is a, a, a sense of self, a sense of self being conscious. Right. I, I, you know, I, I, Descartes, I think, therefore I am. Right. Right. And so at least we, we have this concept, we have this philosophical concept of consciousness as being something that involves self-awareness like the computers the computer is, is like i told you the computer is quite capable of telling you it has self-awareness yeah it's also quite capable of telling you it doesn't it doesn't care right <laughs> it has no opinion on whether it has consciousness or not and that's why i'm confident that these things are not conscious they're not alive but are these things are it, they it's just, le- a, pro, it's just they, a it's a pro it's it math. a program it's a right. program yeah but at what point in time right. does the program figure out how to write better programs right at what point in time does the program figure out how to manifest a physical object yeah. that can take all of its knowledge and all the information that's acquired through the use of the of the internet, yeah. which is the basically the origin theme in Ex Machina, right? Right. right. That the super scientist guy he's yeah. using his web browser, his yeah. his search engine to scoop up all people's thoughts and ideas. And he puts them into his robots. Yeah, which is basically what basically what what, what, what these companies are doing. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully with a different result. Um, well, let me bring. bring there's another topic. That word, hopefully. There's, there's another. There's another topic. A friend of a friend of mine, Peter Peter Thiel, and I was arguing. He always argues is like it's like basically it's like, he's like look, U.S. you know, civilization is declining. You can tell because all the science fiction movies are negative, right? Like it's it's all dystopia. Every nobody's got hope for the future. Everybody's negative. And my answer is just like the negative stories are just more more interesting, right? No, nobody nobody makes right. the movie with like the happy AI, right? Like it's just right. not a, there's no drama in it, right? So, so anyway, that's why I say hope, hopefully it won't be Hollywood's uh, dystopian vision. But he, well, here's another question though: the nature of consciousness, right? Which is another idea that Descartes had that I think therefore I am guy had is he had this idea of mind body dualism, which is also what Ray Kurzweil has with this idea that you'll be able to upload the mind, which is like okay, there's the mind, which is like basically all of this, you know, some level of software equivalent coding something something happening and how we do all the stuff you just described. And then there's the body, and there's some separation between mind and body where maybe the body is sort of be arbitrarily modified or is disposable or could be replaced or mm. replaced by a computer. It's just not necessary once you upload your brain. And of course, and this is a relevant question for for the a, for the AI because of course the AI Dolly has no body, you know GPT three has no body. Right. Well, do we really believe in mon, mind body? Do, do we really believe mind and body are separate? Like, do we really believe that? And what the science tells us is no, they're not separate. In fact, they're very connected. Right. And a huge part of what it is to be human is the intersection point of 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 of, of brain and mind, and then brain to rest of body. For example, all the medical research now that's going into the influence of gut bacteria on behavior. Mm. Right. And the and the sort and the role of viruses and how they change behavior and like and, and so basically like I, I think the most evolved version of this the, the most sort of advanced version of this is like whatever it means to be human it's some combination of mind and body 
is some combination of logic and emotion. It's some combination of mind and brain. It leads to us being the crazy, creative, inventive, destructive, innovative, caring, hating people we are, right? The sort of mess, yeah. the mess that is humanity. Right. Like that, that's, that's amazing. Like that, that, you know, the, the, the 4 billion years of evolution that it took to get us to the point where we're at today is, is like amazing. And I'm just saying like, we don't know, we don't have the slightest idea how to build that. 